Hello, I'm Kath Wood. Today I'm going to talk to you about optimizing images for your website because this is something that's really, really important and that a lot of people, I'd almost say most people, are not doing properly. So you don't just take a photo and upload it straight to your website. You are going to cause yourself a lot of problems. It's going to make your site really, really slow for a start. If your website is slow, people will just flick away from it and therefore search engines like Google really favor fast sites. They know that slow sites suck to use. So make sure that you treat your images properly. Now just before we get into the nitty gritty, I wanna to just touch on one thing that does get some small business owners into trouble and that's copyright. Make sure that whatever images you're using, you have the copyright, the permission to use them. Don't, whatever you do, just lift random images off the internet. That will get you into trouble. Google Getty Images Letter and you'll see what I'm talking about. There is a really great website called unsplash.com. So if you really need an image that's not one that you've taken yourself, you can go there and there are all sorts of great things. And there's other sites too where you can get royalty free images that you're allowed to use on your website, even if it's a business site. So let's get into it. The first thing to think about is size. And let's just paint a little picture. You've got a lounge room with a couple of couches in it and you need a table in the middle to put your coffee on and a couple of books. So really what you need is just a coffee table, right? Something you can pick up, put in the middle, it fits perfect, great, job done. If we're thinking of this in terms of a website, what a lot of people do instead is go to their boardroom, because everybody has a boardroom, and they bring in the boardroom table. It's enormous, it's heavy, it's completely ridiculous, but they wrestle it in and they stick it in the lounge room and bang, they've got a table. But, you know, it's like, it's absolutely enormous, it's ridiculous, it's completely over the top. That's the equivalent of what you're doing when you just shove any old photo onto your website. You've put a boardroom table in place where a coffee table was actually all you needed and would have done the job a lot better. I have two rules when it comes to images. First there's the rule of SNAP, S-S-N-A-P, which stands for size, size, name, alt tag and progressive. And my other rule is the rule of 10%. And that's talking about the relationship of pixels compared to kilobytes. Now, an image is measured in two ways. There's the dimensions, which is like the table. How long is it and how wide is it? That is the dimensions. And in a photo, we call that pixels. Then there's the question of how heavy is it? Is your table made out of jarra, which is a really heavy wood, or is it made out of balsa, so it's as light as a feather? So in images, that's measured in kilobytes. So we have pixels and kilobytes. Now the rule of 10% says that if your image is, let's say, 795 pixels wide, it shouldn't be any heavier than 79 kilobytes. And I usually go a little bit less. So I might make a 795 pixel image something more like 80 kilobytes, right? So coming back to SNAP, S-S-N-A-P, size, size are the first two things, and as you're probably guessing by now, that's referring to size in pixels and size in kilobytes. And the reason I call them both size is because people say things like, how big is your image? And they could be referring to either of those measurements, how big is it in pixels or how big is it in kilobytes. So those are the first two things to think about. I think that if you're ever putting any image onto your website that's more than 100 kilobytes, you need to be having a good hard look at why that is. It's really rare that any image ever needs to go up that's over 100 kilobytes, so keep that number in mind. The next step on Snap is the name. Now an image comes off your camera called something like img.4632.jpg dot underscore four six three two dot jpeg or whatever. Like it's a really meaningless, stupid name. It's really important to rename it to something that's actually meaningful before you upload it to your website. Before. You can't do it once it's uploaded. Once you've uploaded, that's what it's called. And it just really helps Google or any other search engine to know what they're looking at when they can actually see what the name of the image is. If it's called computer.jpg, it's probably a photo of a computer. A stands for alt tag. And that is the description of the photo. It's something that's really useful for search engines like Google, and it's also useful for visually impaired people. So anytime you've got someone looking at a website where they can't see the image, but they can see your alt tag, that's what they'll be looking for. Now, a lot of people are not using alt tags. It surprises me. Every now and then I'll find someone who is using an alt tag, but they've stuffed it full of like 50 keywords. That's just stupid. And it doesn't help anybody or anything. An alt tag should be a clear, concise, accurate description of what's actually in your photo. So if it was the computer photo, for example, it would be Kath's computer sitting on the desk ready for work. 
or cat's laptop computer or something like that. Like it's just a normal sentence. So that's what your alt tag is. The fifth point is P for progressive. So a progressive image loads gradually rather than from the top down like it always used to, you know, chook, 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 chook. So you kind of couldn't see it until it was loaded. With a progressive image, you can pretty much see what it is from the start and it gradually fills in over the first few nanoseconds. So progressive images are considered better for users and therefore the search engines favor progressive images over non-progressive. So how can you tell if your image is progressive? Let me show you a tool that I use called techslides.com. Okay, so we're here at techslides.com and I'm going to select this little button on the left here which says choose file. I can navigate to wherever I want to go to. I've actually set it up so it comes straight to this folder for the sake of this video. So let's have a look at this image here, which is Cap and Cam in costume on the lake. And I click that and it says not progressive. So now I choose another file and I come to this one here called Casey in Toulouse. And this is my daughter doing a spectacular handstand in the Capitol building in Toulouse in France. And when I click that, it says it is progressive. So there we go. That's a really easy tool to test whether images on your computer are progressive or not. And this is handy if you're not quite sure if the tool that you're using is making them progressive. So techslides.com. So how do you actually make an image progressive? Well, I use a tool called Riot, R-I-O-T, and it is just such a great tool because it actually lets you complete four of those five snap steps all in one easy move. Now, I will say this is only good for Windows users. So if you're a Mac user, I'm really sorry. It's going to be a multiple step process for you. I haven't found a similar tool that's good for Macs. So you need to download Riot to your computer and I'll leave the link below. Just make sure that you click on the correct download button. There are ads that are sometimes quite deceptive and they can make it look like you're downloading the thing when actually you're downloading some other piece of rubbish. Once you've downloaded it, you'll be looking at something that looks like this. So we have two boxes here, left and right. One's the initial image and one's the optimized image. Now let's open up one of those images that we we're looking at before. Let's open up the lake one and we'll have a go at optimizing that. So the first thing it does is brings up a warning saying that the image is huge and do we want to do something about that? So I click yes and it brings me up to this sizing panel here. Now we've got here width 6,000 by 4,000 so it's absolutely massive. I'm going to make it 795 pixels wide, which just happens to be the width that you would use in a featured image in a blog post. So now I click OK, and that gives me these two images, left and right, initial and optimized. Now just as a little note, if you ever need to get back to that sizing panel, come down here, bottom right, and that little button there is the one that opens it up. Okay. So what I really love about Riot is this control panel down here, bottom left. Now if we slide this right down to the left, so it's only 1% quality, you can see that our optimized image now is just 5 kilobytes, but it's pixelated to hell, so we couldn't use that. If we slide it all the way up to the right to 100% quality, it's now great, and it's 263 kilobytes, which is way bigger than we would want it to be. So the trick is to find somewhere in between those two things where you're happy with the quality and you're happy with the size. Now remember, this is 795 pixels wide, so it should be no bigger than 79 kilobytes. Now, if I'm sliding this thing here, the percentage is quite different, so I'm not going to 79%, that's percentage, which would give us 46 kilobytes. If I'm looking for 79 kilobytes, I'm looking up here. Now, this is an interesting photo because at around 80% quality, the image still looks good, the quality looks good, and it's only 48 kilobytes, which is much smaller than the target that I was going for, and that's because it's such a simple image. It's got lots of sky, the lake, and there's only a little bit of detail in the middle. So it's really easy to make this image a lot smaller. If it's a much busier image at 80%, it would be more likely to be something like 79. So I could take it up to 90%, and the, the image would now be 73 kilobytes after optimizing, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it at 80, because why would I purposely make it bigger just because you know that was my target? That's a maximum, it's not, it's not kind of the goal. So I'm going to leave it at 48 kilobytes. Now come up here top left and I click save. Replace IMG? No, I'm actually going to use this opportunity to give it a good name. So I'm going to call it, um, I've got my caps lock, Kath and Cam on the lake. Okay, and I click save. 
And now if I come back to that folder, we can see I've got the original one, which is what it was called when it came off the camera, image ing underscore 3762, and Kath and Cam on the Lake is the one that we just did. Now let's just test, going back to our progressive tester and see how that looks. So choose file over here again. We'll look at the original one and open that and it's not progressive. Choose file, Kath and Cam on the Lake, da da da, progressive. Perfect, it worked, that's good. Now, one little thing to know, sometimes when you're using Riot, you'll see, I think this number here goes red, I don't see this very often, but occasionally you'll be choosing a number and it, it'll say something like images and optimized because you didn't actually make a change. So if that happens, when you save it, it won't make it progressive either. So you need to just knock it down to your left until that number there goes green. Now, I'm, it's kind of a bad example because it's green all the time on this one, but just bear that in mind. If you're testing it, it's like, why the hell isn't this working? Go back and look at it again. If that number was red up the top, that'll be what's going on. Now, you don't have to use Riot. Obviously, if you're a Mac user, it's not going to work for you anyway. If you have Photoshop, you can actually do this in Photoshop too. The reason I jump straight to Riot is because most of my clients and students don't use Photoshop. They just need a quick and easy tool that's going to do the job really efficiently. And as you can see, Riot is so great because you can change the size in pixels, the size in kilobytes, the name, and make it progressive all in one easy movement. So if you've got Photoshop and you prefer to use that, go for it. If you're a Mac user, you need to do it in two steps if you don't have Photoshop. First, you use your native Mac image program to reduce the size in pixels, and then you upload it to tinypng.com, and it will make it both progressive and it'll reduce the size and you'll have to obviously change the name manually yourself. So it's a, it's a couple of different steps but you'll get the same outcome. And always use that techslides.com tool to test whether images that you're about to upload are progressive or not. That works no matter what system you're using. Okay, so let's upload that image to WordPress and we'll have a look at the final step which is the A part of Snap which is adding in the alt tag. So I'm over here in my WordPress dashboard. You can see that I have an update waiting to happen that's come out in the last few days. I have made a separate video about how to update your website. So if you don't know how to do this, you can refer to that now. And I'm going to come over here to media and click on that, which will automatically open the top level item in that list, which is a media library. So here I am at my media library and I'm going to click on add new. Now I could have clicked on add new before, but I prefer to do it this way because I find it generally works better. Okay, so I can select my files here or I can collapse my window top right and it'll show up whatever was behind it, which luckily is the correct window. And I can now drag this into here, let go and it'll upload like that. That's how I prefer to do it. Okay, so here it is now, it's uploaded. If I click on that, it brings me up all the details of this image and we can see I have an alt text box here. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it in there. Kath and Cam on the lake at Blazing Swan Festival, because that's where this was. And then I click away from that and watch this little button go around at the top. It's saved. Perfect, there we go. Now we have an image that's correctly sized, it's correctly named, it's progressive, it's got an alt tag, it's on my website, it's ready to use. And that's all there is to it. This is a fairly long video because I wanted to be really clear on the process, but you'll find once you get into the groove of optimizing your images, it only takes a moment. So make sure you do every image before you upload it to your website. If you found that helpful, please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, tell me if there's something else you'd like to learn, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.